Are you guys ready for some on-road action? Check it out. We finally got an on-road machine in here. We've been getting so many off-road cars and more specifically scale off-road machine that uh, some of you guys have been going, hey, is that all you do? Just scale off-road stuff? No, we're getting into scale on-road stuff now with this new Viterra 1972 Camaro SS, the Chevy Camaro SS. And this thing is super cool. Look at the body details on this. I mean, when you first look at it, you almost think that thing is real, but that's the body. Viterra did an awesome job on the recreation of the Chevy body. It's a licensed body too, so it's just cool all the way around here. And this is uh, mounted on their V100S chassis. That chassis has been around for a long time. Uh, so we're really gonna focus on the body details here, guys, and just to see how cool it looks. But it's available in two schemes. Kind of shows you here that we've got the orange, uh, but they've also got this uh, flat black look here too with the pinstriping on it, but some really cool details on this body. And I'm gonna show you in a second. Just wanna kind of show you the outside of the box. It does look very cool. It is almost completely ready to run. It's, it's ready to run as far as there are electronics in here. The body's painted, the car's built. You're just gonna have to supply uh, batteries and a charger for it. And that kind of goes over some power details here. Now it says that, uh, you know, there is no stage one option, which is nickel metal hydride, but they sent me a nickel metal hydride battery for it here. This is a speed pack from Dynamite, just an 1800 milliamp pack, 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride battery. So it does run on nickel metal, uh, but they don't go through the speed features here of that. But this can go up to 25 miles an hour out of the box with a LiPo battery in there. And that is a 2S LiPo. They don't have anything in the 3S column. So there's your high power uh, setup right there. It goes 25 miles an hour. Uh, but we're just gonna go and have some fun with it, like I said, with the nickel metal battery. And uh, let's get into that box now. You guys need to see this thing. I kind of took a sneak peek. Just check that out. And there it is. Oh, it's got this cardboard in the center. And I guess that's just to protect things. Gotta find some scissors to cut this thing out of here because I know there's some, some zip ties under here. And now I get to slide it out. Check, check it out. And they've got plastic on this just to make sure nothing gets scratched up. Whoa, check that out, guys. Very cool. Gotta get these zip ties out of here. I love the look of that. All right, let me, let me get that down right over there. And let's just grab all the stuff that's in the box, all the support equipment that it comes with. Here's the radio system. All right, let's go through this stuff. It's the STX2 radio, and this is kind of uh, the budget model of the Spectrum radio systems. The ready to run model here, super basic. It's kind of got a narrow handle to it. Plastic wheel. Uh, if you're just going around having fun with it, this is probably gonna be just fine. Spectrum technology in there, worry-free operation. All right, now let's take a look at this little bag right here, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. Don't use your teeth. And in this little bag is the double A's. So there you go, four double A's will power that radio system right there. Bind plug in case you need to rebind everything. Comes with some servo saver adapters in case you wanna swap out the servo for some reason. Uh, looks like an extra body mount setup there. And then a little bag of tools in case you need to do some maintenance, some Allen wrenches and a box wrench. And of course, all the usual paperwork that you would, you know, Assume comes in a ready to run kit. And it looks like it's a huge manual thing going on. Look at that. Oh my God, you can go, I can go put this up as a poster on my wall. Oh my God, look at the size of this thing. All right, so there's a lot of stuff in here you should read. It. Now, let me get this over here. We can take a look at this thing and, and it's got more plastic on it. Love pulling the plastic off. It's kind of like that new car thing of an RC car. Pull this off, pull that off. And we've got one on the roof as well. And now we could get the real detailed look of this 72 Camaro here, the SS, the orange paint job. We've got uh, just lots of cool little details going on. Let's start off with the front. So it's a, it's a multiple piece body here. And as you can see, the front clip is bolted on. We've got the center section here, and then we've got the lower pan area. And uh, you know, it's all bolted together. You can see a couple of screws on here, and you know, it's understandable because it is very detailed for Lexan. Uh, so we'll let Viterra slide on that one, but where they make up right here is this chrome grill. This is a separate grill here. Uh, there's even a decal under it so you can see the radiator. We've got the chrome trim over here. We've got headlights, and if I remember correctly, they are LEDs. Yes, LEDs, how cool is that? And uh, they've got a, a decal over it just to give it the additional scale look, nice scale looking decals. We've got the splitter in the front here, chrome mirrors on here, chrome decal door handles. 
uh, chrome trim around the windows and stuff. We got this black spoiler out back. This is a pla molded plastic spoiler, so it's not Lexan. Uh, but overall, very cool. Then check it out out back here. Do we got LEDs back here as well? Yeah, we've got four LEDs in the back. I'll show you guys that in a second. Got the chrome bumper out back. Very nice job on the bodywork, Viterra. Did a great job with that. I think the Chevy fan that sees this is just going to be super excited about it and uh, definitely add this to their collection. I'm from a Chevy family, so I know everybody in my family is going to enjoy it. So let's pull the body off. We can check out what's underneath. There you go. So we've got to pull off this connector here that's in the receiver. And there you go. There are all the wires nicely taped in there. Uh, you know, so they're not flopping around. That's nice. You just have to worry about this one wire to plug into the receiver, obviously, to power it. But, uh, you know, everything is bolted in there. It looks really nice. They did a nice job assembling that. All right, let's put that over to the side. Now we can take a closer look at the V100S chassis. And again, this has been around for a while. This is a proven chassis. I've driven vehicles from Viterra with this chassis before, and it works really, really well. There's a lot of plastic on here. Kind of keeps the price down. Again, this is a fun machine. You're going to go hit parking lots with it, maybe tennis courts, stuff like that. That's where you could drive it. And, uh, you know, it's built to hold up to that type of driving terrain. So uh, up front, we've got a foam front bumper. We've got adjustable body mounts. And the shocks here just are friction shocks. Uh, a little bit of oil on there just so there isn't any binding. And then, of course, the spring for the rebound. Uh, inside the front center here, we have a gear differential. Now, inside the differential, it's a sealed differential. Inside is metal gears, but the ring and pinion are plastic on it. Uh, so just be aware of that if you were to ever go and upgrade your power system in there. That might be a potential weak spot, but for the power system that's in here, totally fine. We've got uh, some composite dog bones, uh, full ball bearings throughout, so that's great. Then up front, we've got this really cool suspension setup. I do like the look of the arms on this. Uh, there's some pretty solid arms and uh, pretty neat steering knuckles as well. Uh, so the front end setup on this looks really good, and I know it does work well with, uh, you know, just fooling around, having some great on-road fun. All right, now the chassis itself, molded composite chassis, pretty stiff chassis, just a tiny bit of flex in there. Got this upper brace on it just to help the front to rear stiffness on it. And uh, over here, this is where your battery goes. So you can put your 2S battery in there or your nickel metal hydride in our case. And it's just one single clip over here. You pop the top up, slide your battery in and return that clip. That takes care of the battery side. Let's go over to the electronic side now. We've got a 15 turn brush motor under here, 60 amp speed controller, and a standard torque servo over here in the front. And mounted on top of the servo is the Spectrum SRX200 receiver. Now these are baseline Spectrum electronics, but they work fine in this ready to run dynamite speed controller, dynamite motor. And again, from experience, it gets the job done. The only thing you gotta watch out for is when you do go and switch from nickel metal to LiPo, there is a little chip in the speed controller that you have to go and move. So just be aware of that. And there is also a reverse lockout in there with this little chip. So, you know, you can go and race, you know, maybe uh, do some spec racing with this thing. And uh, in spec racing, you know, typically you're not allowed to use reverse. So you can go and do that if you do want to. Now, screw to the servo is a servo saver arm. So that's where the uh, shock takes place. Uh, if you do go and hit something, that little servo saver in there will protect the servo. And the, that arm connects to the twin bell crank steering. We've got fixed links going out to the steering knuckles. Totally fine for a vehicle like this. Uh, the system does work out pretty well. Just watch out for pebbles that may get inside. That may hang up the steering. I did encounter that on previous models tested, but uh, you know that's easily fixed by just dumping out the car. Now that we talked about that, composite center shaft to drive the four-wheel drive drive system in here. And uh, kind of just the same thing going on out back as in the front. We've got the gear differential on the back. We've got the friction shocks. We've got this pretty cool looking suspension system. It doesn't have the steering knuckle in the front, but it does have a rear hub that goes and supports the wheels. Again, full ball bearings throughout. There's even droop screws in the suspension arms. That is pretty neat. Adjustable body mounts in the rear in case you ever do uh, grow out of this body for whatever reason, want to go switch bodies, you could do that. And uh, this neat little splitter bumper in the rear. Let's just take a quick look at the bottom of this machine. It's got the cool Viterra logos in here. You can see some additional webbing for the bracing. And then it's got these cool little air guides going on back here. So pretty neat details going on in the chassis as well. Now, other cool little details I got to mention to you guys, these tires here, very cool looking street tire, uh, kind of soft compound. So hopefully that should hook up on a number of asphalt and concrete surfaces. 
cool BBS looking wheels. It's a two-tone wheel here. So you got the black on the inside, the spokes, and then the chrome lip on the outside. And right behind that wheel, you guys can see the faux disc brakes and brake calipers. And the, the brake calipers are red, the brake discs are silver. So it just adds to the cool scale look of this machine. All right, so let's just go have a lot of fun with the Viterra Camaro and see how cool and scale this machine looks going across the parking lot. How awesome did the Viterra Camaro look out there on the asphalt, guys? This thing looks pretty trick. I love what Viterra did here. I think they replicated this Camaro SS, the 1972 Camaro SS, really, really well. They did it justice. And, you know, again, out there, it just looks awesome going across the parking lot. Even the tennis court, I went through a couple parks with it. Drove it in a lot of different areas. And I got to tell you, it definitely turned some heads. I had to actually stop show this vehicle to a couple of people because it really drew some interest. So starting off this performance review, it's really about the body and you know what? It looks awesome. Flat out, looks great out there on the asphalt. Uh, you know, this thing is priced at about 220 and I think uh, a lot of that's because of the licensing on this, but I think Viterra is right there on the price with it because you get a really reliable chassis with this, really reliable electronics. And so if you're just going out to have a lot of fun, this thing is great. Now, as far as the handling goes, you know, it handles pretty well out there. I wasn't, you know, putting it through a lot of torture or anything like that, as I've done with some other vehicles. You know, this is more of just cruising around with it, and, you know, it handled really, really well. Even in some of the rougher parking lots, and actually in the park, you know, it was uh, actually a pretty bumpy surface. It did pretty well at speed. Uh, as far as turning goes, it turns just fine. You know, there's uh, plenty of traction there. Uh, the steering, you know, it's perfectly capable of getting you steered anywhere you need to go. Again, in, you know, parking lots, like tennis courts and stuff like that. As you saw, the turning radius is pretty tight on it. Uh, so again, lots of fun, no problems there. You know, the only thing that I could kind of, you know, knock this thing on is it's a little bit slow on the speed side. And, you know, out of the box with the nickel metal battery that I put in there, it was doing about 20 miles an hour and you know you're thinking camaro you want to go ripping with it uh but you know the electronic system is just kind of a basic system and it gets you going at a decent speed and if this is your first rc car it's going to be a lot of fun but for someone like me uh you know i was looking for a little bit more out of it and i think when you do get this car if this is your first car i think you're going to grow out of the speed pretty quickly 
Uh, you know, I did go to the 2S LiPo battery with it. It did hit the 25 mile an hour mark. That was a lot of fun, um, you know, and run times were really good. It, it's all good to depend on what size battery you get with it. But I went well over 10 minutes with the nickel metal before I switched to the LiPo because I need a little bit more power. But what's pretty cool is Dynamite, uh, which is the speed controller and motor in this uh, vehicle right now. Dynamite is a full line of electronics, so they have upgrades, uh, a couple different upgrades that you go put in this machine nice and easily and make it a bit faster when you're ready for more power. But again, this is a very capable car. It will definitely dish out lots of fun if you're just going out with uh, yourself, a bunch of buddies, and just having fun with RC. It's a great all-around on-road car.